Welcome back. Now it is a Monday and on Mondays we have the opportunity to learn something from people who have been there and done that, especially with their small businesses. It's time for the SME segment. Today we have Deborah Aderemi, CEO of Glossy D Events and Services. Now over the years they've been helping clients organize memorable events, promotions and projects and uh, they are here to help us understand how to run a successful event planning business. It's great to have you here, Deborah. Thank you very much, Maya. I appreciate that. All right. So event planners uh, notoriously are always busy, busy every weekend. Yes. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Every weekend. Not really every weekend sometimes. Okay. Even the weekdays too as well. Weekdays as well. Yes, ma'am. There's always something to do. Exactly. Always something happening. Exactly. It feels like the event industry in Nigeria is thriving in spite of or despite the economic situation in the country. Whenever you have conversations like this with colleagues, friends in the industry, mm -hmm. how does that conversation go? Um, the thing is, um, um, most times clients don't even understand because he has, most of this conversation goes with clients in terms of yeah. um, the budget that they want to use in running the event. Yeah. And they don't want to understand the system of how the economy is. They still want to remain on that same pricing mm. and we try to make them understand that um, you know things are inflating in terms of um, the vendors that will be on board maybe the catering services and decoration and all so and clients do not want to they still want to maintain um, that pricing and so at the end something you priced in 2020 definitely cannot be at the same price it is today. exactly but yet they still want to have that top-notch mm. events, mm. even when they want to spend on that budget. Mm. Uh, it does feel like at a point, especially during COVID, you know, the industry was going to take a dive, a nose dive. But uh, you, you probably agree that there are more events happening now than ever before. Am I right? Well, there's still more events. You know, Nigerians, we like to party a lot. So, no, it doesn't really matter, regardless of whatever it is that's happening in the society. People still want to party and then, you know, have nice times with your friends mm. and then with your family. Let's do an ABC, like, a, you know, just a step-by-step -step okay. as to what it takes to plan an event. When a new customer comes to you, how do you begin? The first thing is uh, you have to be able to listen to your clients and understand what kind of event are they about to have. Is it a political affiliation event, a social event, or um, an official event? Okay. And that now takes you to um, a model where you're able to assess the risk, because risk is actually very important too mm. in the event, ensuring that the environment of the event is safe. Okay. You know, then um, that's when you then move into the segment of managing the clients themselves in their activities and um, um, in also helping them reducing pressures, you know, so, and then also overspending. Sometimes clients want to um, place their money in things that are not necessity for the event. Mm. And that's when we now move into the management of the punctuality of um, the vendors. We will actually do our professional findings on vendors that we're going to bring in that will um, fall into the budget that um, we'll have to go for and then managing the punctuality of the vendors and then their deliverables too as well. And then the major thing is ensuring that the clients and their guests are extremely satisfied. Happy. Exactly. So as, uh, out, of, out of 10 times, um, how, how many times out of 10 are you able to say your client is completely happy? This is, I'm trying to be as honest. <laughs> well, as possible with this? Well, let's be honest. The major thing is sometimes those challenges comes in when um, a client happens to be the one that they want to bring in some vendors themselves. Mm. 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 Sure. They want to bring in some vendors. Mm. So, um, and then you as a planner, you want to manage those vendors because you wouldn't want them to, um, because you don't know the state of that vendor if the person is able to reach the goal of what you want okay. as well. And then clients refuse to hand over that vendors to um, an okay. event planner. So okay. at the end of the day, such event might not end up going well. Hmm. You know, and then sometimes natural distractions, hmm. natural weather distractions, if it's an open event, maybe a campaign sure. Sure. or a party party. Uh, so thing. Mazino and I actually touched on that earlier on, because if you're planning an outdoor event in a place like Nigeria, where the weather is a little bit unpredictable, exactly. you don't know if it could rain or if the sun is going to be hotter than you planned. Uh, there's a lot of variables that go into it. Yes. But how have you been able to mitigate some of these issues, uh, reduce the amount of risk for your own business? 
Mm, if we have um, a client that um, the environment they want to have is um, maybe within the environment, there are um, um, centers, maybe hall locations that we can use, we tend to advise them to go for that. But once the client um, is still insisting or maybe the kind of environment you're using, they don't really have such yeah. in that environment, like maybe when you have to travel outside the state of Lagos, yeah. Yeah. you know, we... we tend to propose contingency plan to okay. clients. Okay. And that is actually very difficult to get because there has to be a plan B, what if yeah. something happens? Yeah. And that's what clients don't want to know. So what I always do is I create an, an MOU hmm. for my clients to also sign that they are aware about this. And in my um, agreement and policy, I keep them informed that anything can happen. Okay. So it is now left to them to, since they signed, sometimes they don't even have time to read through, they still sign. Just so, sign. yes, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> when... I know, but that is indeed to protect your business. But exactly. This is because a lot of people assume planning an event is easy. Honestly. No. <laughs> honestly, no, you just rolled your eyes on Honestly, <laughs> if you don't have the passion, mm. if you don't have the time, and um, if you're not... Um, mm. A multi-taxing person, okay. you can't be an event planner. Mm. Everybody wants to be an event planner. Yeah. And even in the industry, a lot of people also claim to be an event planner. But the major thing is deliverables. Like I tell people, I said, in her business, your integrity is your deliverables. That's wow. it. So it's very challenging. So, you know, the pictures all look great. It looks colorful, you know, especially at the beginning of Thank the event. You. Yeah. But you just said something now. You said, without the passion. You know, uh, but with that passion, does there come profit? Is it actually very profitable to be an event planner with all that stress? Well, um, it is profitable. And then in the other side, sometimes you do your business um, in terms of the passion. Okay. That I just want to execute this. Okay. And in as long as you see that um, the client is willing to hand it over to you okay. to execute. But trust me, in the event industry, it's actually it's profitable, honestly. Okay. It is profitable. Right. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that because the work you do is, honestly, it's a lot of work. Imagine stringing all those lights, getting the right shots, getting the right food, getting the the right energy, the right mood for your events. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the way some vendors behave um, and, you know, they, they take a sort of nonchalant view of your events. Some, some vendors can be like that. Well, for me, and that's the reason why every event planner must always hold a vendor's meeting okay. with the vendors. So when you have a vendor's meeting on before the event, especially when it's been outsourced by the event, such vendors will not miss because, because that event planner would have professionally scouted for the right vendor. Okay. But when you see those vendors that are having those non challenge and whatever, mm. most times they come from the client directly. Wow. And that client has refused to hand over mm. the vendor to the planner. We've talked a bit about trust today right here on Wake Up Nigeria. In the end, what a client is doing is trusting an event planner with their baby, trusting, you know, an event planner with a project. And at some point, you have to just let them do their thing. Yeah. I have to say a big thank you to you, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me. For coming me. to talk to us. Thank you. At, at this point, I know you have loads of vendors that make great food. Chef yes. Mimi Gold has definitely worked on events as well. Oh, okay. She has a really tasty package for us in the kitchen. Please. Join us. Okay, thank you very much, Mom.